Hello, this is Becca from Willow Hill Designs, and welcome. Today I will be sharing the start of my prompt for Roxy's Journal of Stitchery, Volume 5, which is the bag prompt. And um, so I was thinking at first that I would make a rice bag for, for this prompt, and um, then I thought, well, what will I put in it? I really don't have anything to put in it. I don't need a place really uh, to store anything in a little bag like that. Um, all of my stitching things are generally in a little tray, uh, a square tray by my stitching chair. Um, so I, I thought I don't really need a bag like that, but um, the more I thought about it, I thought I would make a satchel type bag so that when I am either out traveling or visiting or even sitting outdoors, I can put my things that I need in this bag. And the main consideration was that I wanted to fit my, um, I, I guess this is more than a needle book, I guess I would call it kind of a sewing kit because it contains everything that I need in here. This is everything that I need when I am a stitching. Um, the scissors, it's got a place for my threads, it's got my thimble, seam ripper, it's got uh, tweezers, needles, more needles and pins in here, places to put my needles. Um, so this really has everything that I, I can't think of anything more that I would need while sitting and stitching. So this was a consideration to be able to fit this in this kind of a satchel type bag. I wanted to be able to fit this and the little project and maybe a couple of spools of thread that I am using to work on this little project with. So that's what caused me to design the size of the bag. And so this this is the pattern that I drew. I wanted it to be like a, a satchel or a saddle bag, I guess. I'm I'm calling it a satchel, um, and this would be the size, and I can fit my um, sewing kit in here easily. I wanted to make sure that this opening, there would be enough on either side to fit this in here, and it, this will also have a gusset around the sides for the bottom portion of the bag. There will be a gusset around that, so it'll make it deeper and I'll be able to fit my um, sewing kit in there and any little project that I'm working on. So this was the pattern that I drew and here are the pieces of this. This is this is the top or that top flap and the lining. Here's the lining for this piece and the reason that I did this in two pieces. Um, I was going to do one piece, but my fabric is directional, and if I had things right side up here on the back, they would be upside down in the front. So I decided to make two pieces out of this. And this is the fabric that I chose. I'll show you more here. And I'll just share a little video at the end of, um, I'll be keeping this bag in my great room um, and the, the decor in there is very rustic. It's kind of Adirondack nature inspired, uh, very rustic. So this is the fabric I chose and being that this is such a large bag um, to do all patchwork pieces and invisibly stitch them and then add embellishments, um, I just thought no. <laughs> but I mean, I would never finish that in a month. So this would be the back of the bag, and this would be the front of the bag. I, I'm pretty sure I'll keep this as the front. So it will look like this. Um, and I just love this. I mean, I'll be putting uh, other little pieces on this and stitching to make it look a little bit more rustic. But um, So I thought what I would share is that I... Um, I quilted this fabric. After I cut out my pieces, my lining, and my fabric, I quilted this. Uh, let's see if I have one that's not, yeah. 
and I, I also added a little pocket to the lining here. Um, but I quilted this fabric with just a free motion stipple stitch. And this is um, just a cotton, I think it's 100% cotton batting. And I felt that that was a little bit flimsy. So I've added to that an iron-on pellon fleece. Um, and I ironed that to this piece. This piece already has that added onto it ironed on and this piece also the front has that pill on added to that just to give it a little bit more stability um, and this but this lining fabric is an art gallery fabric and it's kind of light um, a little bit see-through a little bit you can kind of see through it and you can see that here and this will be the back of the bag so it will look something like this when it's stitched together. That'll be stitched on, and then this will carry around to the front. But as you can see here, um, I've done some stitching, and it's showing through even the second layer of the batting, the, the Pellon fusible fleece. So because I'm using black on here, and I'm pretty sure it will show through this lining. Although this one is a little bit better. I think this other lining is a little bit lighter. And I think that stitching will show through. So what I, I'm probably going to have to do is to take some fusible interfacing and iron it to the back side of this lining fabric. And and then I will sew those all together. Um, and that should prevent any show through. And I'll just show you, and again, here's my little pocket, just to put some little things if I wanted to, and there maybe small spools of thread. But my needle book should fit in here. I'm actually hurrying a little bit because the eclipse is happening here. And we are in, kind of in the path. Um, we're not totally total totality, but 97% for the area where we are. So I want to hurry. <laughs> I, I have the little glasses to go. And um, so I'll be, I'll be out there looking at the eclipse. Um, 20 years, I guess the next one is uh, 2044. So I'll just show here that I've done a little bit of stitching on this. Um, I've just did some V stitches here, kind of a fly stitch here, a disconnected fly stitch, and then a back stitch along these branches just to sort of um, give them a little more life to emph emphasize those a little bit. And I'll be adding some messy French knots here for these berries, and I'll probably do some stitching on the birds. And um, let's see. And I also have the gusset. The gusset is uh, a long piece of fabric that is the same fabric with the birds on it. And you can see it here. Um, let's see, I'll just remove that. Oh, my kids are texting madly because it's beginning, I think, by my daughter's. She can see it a little tiny bit. But um, this has also been quilted, free motion quilted. And what I will do is stitch all the way around the perimeter of this long gusset, and I'll leave one end open, and I will turn it so the edges will be finished. And then this gusset will be put along the outside edge of the bag. So it will give the bag some depth for me to fit some things in there. And so the way that I will do all of it, I'll do it all the same way. I will do all of my stitching, on the outside of the bag, and then I will put the interfacing on the lining. I'll put those right sides together, and I will stitch around, turn it right side out. And what I plan on doing after doing all of the hand stitching, slow stitching on the surface of the bag is that I will whip stitch the gusset to the bag by hand 
so that will not be machine done. It was machine quilted um, to quilt this by hand before even beginning the project, um, before doing any stitching on it whatsoever. I, I plan on doing as much stitching as I can on this bag. The, the owl will appear on the back, but um, I'll be doing quite a bit of stitching. So to hand quilt this, and then do the stitching and then put the bag together. I mean, I think that would take more than a month in between other projects that I'm working on. So um, I won't do that, but I will piece the bag together with the gusset around the side by hand. And I just pulled some uh, pearl cotton number 12 that I'll be using. Some of it is DMC, some of it is Finca, some, that's DMC, some of it may be Eleganza, DMC, Finca. Um, yeah, I think these are mostly DMC or Finca. Um, so I've pulled some colors. I've also pulled some wools to use. I may use this on, on some of the berries. Some of the berries are a little bit more orange. So I may use these colors here. And I've got a little darker wool. And then, of course, I've got the um, pearl cotton, which can also be put on there for a little bit more shading, depending on what colors I need. And um, let's see, I think I pulled... Yes, I, I did pull a few little things that I may use on here. Um, I will be adding some doilies. I don't think I have that little bag right here. No, I don't. It's in the great room. But um, I I will be pulling some things to add on to this as well. So it won't be just stitching on this fabric. It will also have the um, little elements, little pieces and snippets of a little tiny bit of lace and maybe some uh, doilies, just little pieces, but I just want little snippets, kind of little tattered pieces that'll be stitched on here. I don't know about this one. Um, yeah, I didn't bring that. See, I'm, I'm so excited about the eclipse that I haven't brought everything in here, <laughs> but I thought I would get to this and get this finished right now. Um, I have groceries coming that I think will be probably delivered in the darkness, right right, probably at the height of the eclipse. But um, so anyway, that is where I stand right now with this. And it's so far it's fun and I think it will be very useful. Um, I, I do like to make things that are pretty just for decoration, but I really truly didn't need anything like that. So this will be something nice and useful for me um, with my stitching, and I will enjoy taking it with me to um, other houses or traveling or outdoors. But this is what it will look like. I should be able to fit this with that nice gusset and a little project. And um, I'm having fun here. I'm just, I'm not fussing too much over um, doing anything in any certain way. I'm just doing stitching as the spirit moves me, and that's what I'll do all along as I go. So thank you very much for joining me today, and I'm wishing you many blessings, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. I thought I would show you where I'll be keeping my bag, and it will be in our great room next to my stitching chair. And the decor in this room has a very rustic feel. It's nature-inspired, kind of an Adirondack look with wood on the walls and trees, bark, um, nature everywhere. <laughs> if I can fit it in a painting of a downy woodpecker, a branch with a bird's nest, um, and a, a lamp that is made out of branches from a tree. So I feel it'll be perfect here. Here are some pictures of the eclipse. I hope you enjoy them.